Hello friends, how are you? My name is Corbin Reed and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is a very exciting day. I'm late on this video. I've been doing promo for season two of my TV show that I'm a star on called Run the World. So extra plug here. If you have stars or you're interested in getting stars and you wanna watch some new TV, season two of Run the World will be out May 26th, so check me out, check the show out, check us out. Three awesome women running running the world in New York. Aside from that, it took me a while to edit this, so I'm back. I wanted to make sure it looked good because this kitchen is really has been a labor of love. This video will be a combination of how I use wainscoting, adding architectural elements like wainscoting, wallpaper, ceiling molding adding in some rechargeable LED lighting for some more mood lighting to spotlight the architectural details on the wall and also things that I've hung, like these floating shelves, adding hardware, brass hardware, um, like pot rails to different parts of the kitchen. And um, I also even added some sort of like, almost like tambour, like paneling to the side of the island for another architectural element, um, some added texture and interest, and then after you see all of that and I give you a closer look at the cabinets and the hardware that finally came in, I show you how I style up this space. Now because my kitchen is open to my dining and living area, it was sort of, it had to be so that I, as a part of the kitchen makeover, also made over and tied in the dining room and the sort of walk-up space to my kitchen so it has a really nice flow now that I added this same wainscoting all wrapped around and in the dining room and in the kitchen and painted the cabinets as sort of a different off-white but they're all in the off-white family so it's a really beautiful flow and I cannot wait to show you if this sounds interesting to you then please just keep on watching So this is a before of what the wall looked like before I added wainscoting to it. The styling doesn't change too much, but the wall changes a lot. The wall started out green and it was fine two years ago when I first moved in, but my style has changed and I will be adding wainscoting and wallpaper on this wall, but wainscoting floor to ceiling um, and the other two spaces everywhere else. So. I started out by clearing away this wall, everything on it. I do end up adding it all back in, but I have to clear it away, but the styling does change a bit. And those light fixtures weren't hardwired, I just had them there aesthetically. I am cutting the primed pine boards for the wainscoting. Now this is a process that I do go more in depth to on tips and tricks for measuring and all of that. If you are interested in that, please be sure to check out my office bathroom makeover video, which I will link for you above. And there I go more in depth, but here I'm just showing you, I cut the wood, I labeled all of the measurements because each wall is a little bit different and then I laid out grouped them together by like the wall for the dining room the wall for the entryway and the wall in the kitchen so that I can just basically pop them on the wall without having to think about it once I get up into the kitchen another thing I did to make the process easier is trace the level lines onto the wall so that like I said it's more of a copy paste situation and I'm not having to fool with the leveler. This also is just easier when you're doing it by yourself so you're not trying to fool with the level and the wood and the staple gun. It's just too many things to mess with at one time. So I highly recommend tracing with a pencil or a marker especially if you're going to paint which you probably will if you're doing wainscoting onto the wall with a level line um, exactly where you want the wood to go and it just also helps you to visualize the wainscoting and make sure you like 
you know, how everything is spaced out instead of just using like a calculator or something like they have online where you just measure the wall and insert and then they give you the calculations of spacing. I'm more visual and I like to see it before I commit to actually putting it up on the wall. So this process goes very quickly if you mark your boards and do all those things I just told you to do. I think this probably took me for this wall to get these pine boards up about 45 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Once I got to the entry wall, you can see the same thing, same process. <laughs> um, I just traced with a marker because it's easier to see, was easier to see over the green, the level lines, and then just did this whole process where I basic, basically copy pasted, and I did not use any liquid nails on the back of these boards. They're pretty secure with just the brad nails. And in the event that, who knows, God forbid, one day I need to tear it all off, it just is easier to take off and, and change my mind. Whereas if you use liquid nails, if you try to remove it, it will rip off the drywall with the boards, which is not great. And this is the last detail here I wanted to add. The wainscoting on the wall adjacent to the entry wall going into the kitchen and I'm only going halfway up the wall because again on the top half of this wall I am going to add wallpaper instead of paint so I just think it'll add more texture and give it more contrast and just adding this thickness to the walls just makes it so much more luxurious now I am not just doing pine board in here. I'm going to be adding a base cap molding onto the inside of this wainscoting. So it just has a more classic look and looks even more luxe and more depth. So that is what is coming up next. So the process for making the cuts for the base cap molding is very similar, identical to the process of adding picture frame molding. I do have a video where I go in depth on how to organize your cuts and make your cuts. I use the miter saw, although there are sort of like miter hand cutting tools that you can buy, I believe. I've never used them, but I would imagine it might go faster if I did. Um, but if you would like a more in-depth tutorial on how to organize these cuts and make these cuts, um, be sure to check out the video that I have linked above where I do picture frame molding in my hallway. But as you can see here, adding the base cap gives a depth to the wall, even more so than just picture frame molding or just plain um, flat wainscoting. I think it's a timeless look and it just really elevates the space.
So you can see there are a lot of gaps and I will be filling those with caulk and spackle. I don't show it to you because it's boring to look at, but this is what it looks like before. And this is what it looks like after. You can just see it's super seamless and I do have some um, paint samples on the wall, but once it's caulked and spackled, it's a uniform look and it looks like it just is a part of the wall. So next up, I went in with some primer. You do have to prime the base cap molding if you use the same one that I used um, because it's not wood. I believe it's like a vinyl um, exterior. And so you want to make sure you prime that. I'm also priming the entire wall because I'm going to be painting this with a lighter color. I went with Silk Chamois and you can't paint over green without priming it. So that is what I'm doing here and Zinzer is truly the best primer. Now it is a bit difficult to see, but these are the three colors that I had on the wall. I, I was trying to see if I wanted to do Swiss coffee again. The one I believe in the middle, the darkest one, or no, yes, the one in the middle is the one I ended up going with. Hi, popping in here really quickly. I just wanted to show you guys the first coat. It just looks so good with all of the colors in the kitchen. I really cannot believe this difference. It's pretty remarkable. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do one more coat, and then that'll be it. It's really beautiful. Um, the last thing is gonna be for me to do wallpaper, and then that'll be it. That'll be the like little kitchen makeover. So let's keep going. So I'm using the same peel and stick wallpaper that I used in my office bathroom. Again, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, please be sure to go check that out. I've already linked it. Um, I did have to spackle over a bunch of holes in the wall, so that's what's on the wall there. And I used that easy wall hang as a primer to activate the paste on the back of the pre-stick. Um, the pre-paste, um, it's not pre-paste, it's a peel and stick wallpaper. It just helps it smooth and makes it movable, so if you mess up, you can um, move it around and it's not like completely stuck to the wall. And then I used this um, tool which helps you smooth it out which I will link down below. But I highly recommend using both those things with this peel and stick wallpaper. It just makes the process much easier. Here is a look back at where I started with all of this. Blank walls, no backsplash, flat builder grade laminate front cabinets. And here is where I ended. This is the finished cabinets. I didn't really get to give you guys a good look at them last episode. So here they are, all the coats of paint, all of the hardware in all of their glory with the Swiss coffee paint and the shaker fronts. The pantry turned out so well. I love that extra bar against the front. My trash um, is hidden in the cabinets as well, which I love. And this is the underside of the peninsula. I did mix the knobs with the poles, which I think also turned out really beautifully. And then this is the other side of the peninsula. And this is the wall, um, the dining wall, the Wayne's Conning before I've styled it, of course, but this is what it looks like with two coats of paint, completely dry. And this is the entryway wall with the Wayne's Conning, two coats of paint, completely dry. And now I am going to style up the kitchen Wayne's cutting wall before I reveal the full thing to you. So this is a brass pull, a brass bar pot rack, excuse me, that I got 
from Ikea and it looks super expensive. These things can go for upwards of you know $150. This isn't real brass, but it looks good enough to me. I like that it's a warm color. So I'm literally just screwing this into the wood with some wood screws, super simple. It was there before, but it looks so much better on this wainscoting instead of just the flat drywall. And then you can buy these hooks from Ikea as well. And I believe they're like $5 for a pack of six. Now on the other side, underside of the floating shelves, I have this beautiful true brass hardware that I got off of Etsy. I will link it down below. It is from a UK company and I just think they are super high quality and brass hardware like this can really just add warmth to your finishes and the details make so much of a difference. So this is what the wall looks like with the wallpaper and the wainscoting. And now for the best part, styling. So I started off with this Again, brass sort of planter. I believe I got it off of Zara Home. It was a part of Athena Calderon's line. That little picture is from Olive Atelier, and that is a faux plant from Ikea. I just like the movement that it has hanging off the side of the shelves. And then these are two vases that I got, bud vases from the Hearth and Hand collection. This easel is from McGee & Co., and I do believe they still sell it and it might be on sale. So if I can find it, I will link it down below. And I got this photo off of Etsy. It was like a vintage print that they framed. <laughs> Excuse that. But I thought that this looked better on the top shelf, so I moved it. I just like the height up there better. It just feels less trapped and more open. And then that way on the bottom shelves, I was able to add these ceramic bowls that I have got from both Target and Ikea and those are bowls that we reach for all the time for lunch or snacks or whatever so it's nice to have them accessible and ready to grab on the open shelves and they look great. For the pot rail I wanted to keep the decor simple but also in the same palette as everything else furniture wise in the living room and in the kitchen so I'm going with this warm wood these vintage utensils that i got from this canadian seller off of etsy this is a black stained cutting board from the hearth and hand collection at target that i got i believe last year sometime um but i do believe they still sell it at target then i just added this wicker hanging basket another etsy find i felt like it looked really handcrafted because it is handcrafted and then this copper ladle I actually found at an antique store in Napa Valley. So all of these items together are just varied and they add texture and stick with the texture story and the material story in both my kitchen and my living room and dining room. And then lastly, just to soften everything up, I just added this cotton tea towel. Um, but I also do put dirty dish towels in there and then bring them down to the laundry. So it's pretty and functional. <laughs> and the last piece I added is this stool. This is a vintage Chinese elm wood stool that I also got off of Etsy. And I can link the seller or similar ones down below but I love these little round stools they add so much texture and interest this light above the shelves I added it is removable on a magnet and it is also rechargeable and it's great for just some mood lighting in the space and is a huge upgrade from what I had now this is my new rug runner I got this from rugs USA this is a jute I believe hundred percent jute checkered pattern rug this is from Arvin Olano's collaboration line with them I am loving this rug I find that jute is just hard working and difficult to mess up especially in an area like the kitchen where it's constantly getting trampled on god forbid even spilled on it can just handle it all and it really does kind of hide the stains this is a view of the counters just before I have styled them. So 
So for styling here, I'm using two genuine antique pots, vintage pots. One is a French crock and the other is a Chinese clay pot. Actually, that one is Ukrainian. I got that from an Etsy seller on Etsy in the Ukraine. And then I'm just adding my wooden cooking utensils that I actually use every time I cook. And then I have a bunch of copper ladles that I actually got from Amper Interiors. These are brass pepper mills that I just love, pepper and salt. And then I have my olive oil. And these are three things that I use every single day. And then for a salt pinching pot, I'm using this vintage wood um, ladle, which I'm not sure if it's food safe, but I did clean it out. So I just have some salt flakes, melt own salt flakes in there and this marble spoon rest and this copper teapot that I got off of Amazon, which is not vintage, but it looks vintage. Then in this corner, I'm just taking this stack of cooking books and flanking them with these vintage horse heads, which I actually thrifted from a thrift store in the valley here. And I think I got the pair for about $8, but I see these horse heads every once in a while um and they are really not cheap they're marble they're solid marble um so i think that i got really lucky in finding them at the thrift store but they add so much character to the space and vintage will do that for you So this piece is a painting that I once again bought off of Etsy. I just love it. I actually had a print here before, but I decided it was time to invest. I do think that this is a timeless piece that I'll have forever. And that frame I put it in is a frame I picked up from my local thrift store and I spray painted it and rub and buffed it to make it look like an antiqued gold frame. It was just a plain wood frame, but I just love how it turned out. have this wood cellar that I use for my monk fruit sweetener sugar and then I just add on top of this I think it's called a bajo tray it's an Indian wood tray um, all of my things I need to make coffee then next at the sink I just put this simple marble tray that I got from Target I believe it's part of the Casa Luna's bathroom line it was like $15 and then put my hand soap, dish soap, and cleaning solution in these amber glass bottles. Not having labels on your counter and repurposing the solutions into glass amber bottles like this just gives everything a very neutral appearance and it makes everything look much more high end than having labels which can be very distracting and junky looking. And then I also have neutral sponges. I love the scrub daddy and I keep them in this simple silver container from Simple Human. And then this mortar and pestle I also got off of Etsy. It's from an Italian company that makes them by hand. Um, and it was a splurge, but it's one of those things I'll have forever. And I just use it to store my garlic. And I do actually use it um, to make guacamole and other things, pesto, things like that. And then this is a brass piece that I thrifted once again from my local thrift store and I use it to keep my rings in when I'm doing dishes or cooking. And then the side of the island, I didn't show exactly this process, but I just added some pole wrap and painted it the same color and framed it out in that same poplar wood to match the cabinets and added the pot rail. And then for decorations, I just put these two copper pots that I've collected. I believe I got these both from the Rolls Bowl Flea Market. And then this is a cutting board that I got from, it's a vintage cutting board. I got it from Olive Atelier here in Los Angeles. And last, I just got this little hanging basket. I believe that was actually a Hobby Lobby find. 
And that's all I did to style up the side of this island. And then these are my chairs, my new Pottery Barn custom chairs, counter stools. Um, they're leather and wood and they're super well made and I will have them forever and I'm completely in love. I waited about 10 months for those things to come in. And then on the ceiling above the island, I did add the ceiling medallion, which was not there before. If you remember the before picture and I like how it mirrors the one over the sink. If you want to see in depth how I add these to my lighting fixtures, please be sure to go back and check out part one of the kitchen makeover where I show you how I did the shaker style cabinets and the ceiling medallion and go into the in depth on the how to of it all. I will link it above. This is a vintage marble handled bowl. I think the proper word for it is chapati potentially, or maybe that's the marble tray. There's chapati. I forget what the bowl is called. Maybe they're both chapati, but they're both marble and they're both vintage that glass vase is from ikea that is a very good buy super neutral great for summer it lightens up the whole space instead of having a ceramic there it's nice to have something see-through these are faux stems i just added water to the base to make them look more real they're faux wisteria and i've actually been getting more into real florals for spring but here I was in in faux floral mode so adding water to the base of this see-through pitcher makes them look more lifelike and then this is the wall opposite my dining table I'm just adding back in this vintage pine sideboard a couple stacks of books, this Fulani milk bowl with some green moss balls, faux moss balls in it, this clear book holder, and flipping to a page in this book that I really like. And that's it. Super simple styling against this wall. I did add these same LED rechargeable light fixtures above this sideboard. I just love the way that they highlight the wall at night and they really do last several days before I have to recharge them and I love that they're on this magnetic swivel so they go up or down and they have different light settings as well. And then this is just my dining table if you're wondering, wondering what my dining room looks like. Again, it's all an open concept so one kind of flows into the other but the wainscoting really helps me delineate the spaces, but also unify them because I have it on the dining wall and the kitchen wall and the entry wall. And then this is the wall you see when you come up the stairs to this third floor here where the living room, dining room, and kitchen are. And this is how the wainscoting turned out. I do want to make a cover for the return air vent there. I didn't do the best job painting over that green, but that is another DIY project for another day. So this, I'm just moving back the super heavy. This is an antique butcher block. It's very old from the 1800s. And this is one of my favorite prints of a scene from Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and Sam Cooke. There was a movie called One Night in Miami about that night that Muhammad Ali won this big fight. Then I'm just adding these two coffee table books that tie in the neutral colors that you see here, the off-white, the brown, and this vintage marble bowl. Just super simple, but again, it all plays into the same texture story, the same color story. Once again, I've added in this rechargeable LED light above the photo for an added element of mood lighting to this room.
Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. At this point, I have more content than I can edit because of how much I have going on with my show and trying to do PR for that simultaneously. I'm headed to New York in a few, couple of days, but there's a lot that I have to show you guys still, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And also let me know down below your favorite part if there's anything that you are going to try in your own home, any of these DIYs. And also, of course, as always, if you see anything that I use to style with in this video, I will be sure to link it down below. If it is linkable, a lot of it is vintage or one of a kind, but I do try to show you similar items. Um, so that you too can style in your home with these. Also be sure to check out my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'm over at Story Design. And if you like TikTok, I have a TikTok, which I will link here. And I also have an Amazon storefront where you can find some of these items that I've styled with as well, or things that I like in my kitchen. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you in the next one.